So, and, and let me just apologize to folks who are following along uh, online. We, um, we lost the audio for about the first, uh, the first um, 10 minutes of Matt's talk. So um, uh, you missed a really great uh, yeah, review great. <laughs> of, uh, of uh, what computational social science is. So my task is to take us through the Institute. Why are we here? What are we going to do? Um, how are we going to save the world with big data, et cetera? Um, and um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the initial reason I think this all happened is that Matt and I shared a, a similar experience, which is that we had been among the first people to teach classes on computational social science. Um, and we were regularly giving talks. And after talks, uh, junior folks, graduate students, postdocs, junior faculty, kept coming up to us and saying, this is really cool, but how do I get the training? How do I, you know, how do I, um, learn how to do this stuff. Um, and, you know, we always had half-assed answers, which were kind of like, you know, well, uh, you know, I have some slides, or, you know, go to data camp, or something like that. But um, for all the reasons that, that Matt just described, um, this is such a complex field. It involves so many different um, constantly moving parts. And um, when the Russell Sage Foundation approached us to, uh, to think about putting this together, um, we got really excited about the idea of bringing um, all of you together um, to, for, for a variety of purposes. Um, the, other, the other big picture thing here that I think is really um, interesting and exciting for all of us is that um, there's a lot of conversations far beyond um, <coughs> academe that um, have bearing on this, uh, this field that we're all uh, helping to build. Uh, so I just came back last week from Washington, where the National Academy of Sciences, which for, for our many international visitors, this is our kind of our biggest high council of nerds, um, they, um, they had convened a report at the request of the National Science Foundation, um, in a, particularly in this kind of uncertain funding climate that we found ourselves in, um, to kind of figure out how social science should evolve, how social science should go forward. Um, and um, a really marquee group of people came together, uh, people like Hal Varian from Google, um, Arthur Lupia in political science, um, folks from Facebook, Google, um, all over industry and all over government, came together and produced what's a really a wonderful report that I encourage you all to check out. But one of its principal recommendations was that the National Science Foundation should support training consistent with the way science is evolving across all scientific fields. Uh, training should prepare, prepare the next generation of scientists to be more data intensive, interdisciplinary, and team oriented. And when I read this, I was like, oh, that's exactly what we're trying to do with, with the Summer Institute. So cool. So, so we're ahead of the game. The good news is here that, that, that uh, there's a lot of funding that I think we're going to see on the horizon. So at this meeting, the heads of the National Institutes of Health, National Science Foundation, people responsible for funding research at Facebook and Google were all present. and. Um, and at the end of my spiel uh, this morning, I'll tell you about uh, a particular opportunity for you all via the Ross Russell Sage Foundation. So that's the good news. Um, the bad news is that um, this problem that we're facing, which is getting the training, creating interdisciplinary dialogues, and um, working across disciplinary silos and disciplinary divides, is a very old problem. Um, one of the interesting things that came up in this conference was that um, you know, intellectuals have been talking about how to bridge, how to do interdisciplinary, how to, uh, how to do interdisciplinarity, how to bridge uh, the, the disciplinary silos. Um, and, and what we see often is like a really disconnected graph like this, where we see a lot of, uh, a lot of little pockets of people talking to each other, having the same types of conversation, and, and lacking the kind of lateral connections um, that we know make for good science. So, Here's a really interesting piece from Science by Brian Uzi et al, who's at Northwestern, <coughs> uh, Brian Uzi. And it's a paper that looks at 17.9 million papers and tries to quantify novelty in terms of various types of impact. And the key upshot of this paper, um, which I encourage you to check out, is that on the x-axis here we have this hit paper probability, which is, or sorry, y-axis we have hit, hit paper probability. Um, these are things like impact, citation count across fields. And on the y-axis is the, essentially the extent to which pre-existing ideas from different fields are combined in atypical ways. And there's two take-homes from this graph. The first is that 
the more you make those atypical combinations, the better. <coughs> and then second, in the color here describes uh, teamwork versus individual work. So the maximal impact, uh, according to this uh, very large scale analysis of 17.9 million papers over decades, is that the best work is going to make atypical combinations across scientific fields in a team setting. So once again, a proof of concept for what we're trying to do here. Um, so, so, okay, so how do we do this here? Uh, first, let's talk about our goals. Um, the, goal, the first goal I think I already mentioned, and that's to provide state-of-the-art training. Um, if you've had the chance to get to know each other, so many of you weren't at the dinner last night, but we, you know, I was just thrilled to see everybody already making the lateral connections, talking about which conferences they go to, talking about R versus Python, whatever, you know, just like getting into it um, already, and you've probably had a sense already that lots of people are, are already, already have significant skills in the area, um, and, and of course you've, you've completed um, online code coursework before the event if you have not, um, but we wanted to get you to that plateau of productivity as soon as possible that Matt just showed, and so we're going to really just kind of try to get to the cutting edge as soon as possible. Um, that's goal number one. Uh, the second goal, uh, this is Matt's line that I like a lot, we, we need to put ourselves out of business as soon as possible. So you are here in large part because we want to teach the teachers. We've identified you not only as people who have really interesting research agenda, a lot of talent, but also people who we see as, as, as people who will help advance this field um, across disciplines and across countries. Um, so we would, you know, we would be overjoyed if, you know, uh, a few years down the line, you know, uh, there's no need for this anymore, especially uh, because of our third goal, which is that this is, this is uh, the, the live stream that Matt mentioned at the outset, um, but also all the course materials are entirely open source. Everything's hosted on the conference's GitHub site. Um, and the idea here is that this can be a resource for you all as you go on to become teachers and teach your own classes. Um, one of the really frustrating things for me in designing my first class was just figuring out what, what content goes in, you know, do you teach, uh, do you teach machine learning, do you teach topic modeling, do you teach um, screen scraping anymore? You know, there's all sorts of really uh, difficult questions to figure out, and it's also challenging to reach an interdisciplinary audience, and so we're hoping that all the slides and material and code are written in a sufficiently open and clear way that, that this can be a resource for you, for you all as you go on to teach, teach your own courses, and of course for everybody following on online as well. So the fourth goal I've kind of already hinted at quite a bit, and that's to challenge disciplinary divides. I really appreciate that Matt gave a very capacious definition of what computational social science is, um, because I think you know we really need to let that come out in our conversations together. Um, that said, this is easier said than done. Um, you know, there's, there's disciplinary specific jargon, there's uh, domain knowledge about coding, um, there's a variety of, of, of challenges that we're going to have to overcome, but um, I think this is a really worthy goal. Um, very few conferences bring together junior folks uh, with the goal, the express goal, of making them um, able to, to, to make lateral connections with each other. You know, most conferences you come, you give a paper, the next person gives a paper, the idea here is instead, you know, instead of you doing your work elsewhere and bringing it here, doing the work here, getting to know each other here, and we hope that that will naturally allow you to continue collaborations far beyond the institute. Okay, um, so how will we succeed? How will we get there? The first thing that I think is, is going to be a real challenge um, is just patience and openness. Um, we have not only uh, at last count, I think, nine different disciplines represented, but all career ranks, all skill levels, um, and um, that means that we, um, for, some, for some folks, certain topics are going to be a little redundant. For other people, they're going to be brand new. Um, we've tried to strike a balance in the lectures uh, that, that we'll be having over the next few days between um, detail about how to and the big picture. And so um, the, the compromise that, that we've made is to put a lot of the code um, online. So most of the lectures will be covering bigger picture things like instead of, you know, how do I wrangle the Twitter API to get the small chunk of data I want, instead it will be something more like what is the strength of Twitter data given a particular research question and what are the strengths of Twitter vis-a-vis -vis Facebook or other types of digital trace data in that case. Um, 
So I think, I think though, um, you know, you've all already demonstrated the, the interest and capacity to speak across disciplinary divides. So you probably already know that openness and patience is, is part of this process. The second big thing, um, and this is kind of a novel, uh, somewhat novel model, but it's inspired by the, the kind of startup mantra, the Silicon Valley ma mantra, um, you know, fail harder. Um, we, we have kind of a startup model um, planned for especially the second week, and the idea is to get all the way to uh, publications, um, maybe even funded research, um, by through a systematic, um, iterative, and cumulative approach. So we have a group exercise, I think, every day. So later today, we'll be doing an exercise on ethics. Um, tomorrow, we'll be doing an exercise building apps. Um, on uh, Wednesday, we will be analyzing a corpora using text analysis in, in groups of, I think, four or five, somewhere around there. Um, and um, because our goal across the entire two weeks is to get to actual research projects, um, we hope that these individual exercises, some will fit more naturally into this than others, can be a, a, a preliminary discussion about what a good group project might look like. Uh, but we will spend much more time during the second week, and especially Monday of next week, uh, sorting ourselves into teams according to our interests. And <coughs> so, um, so that whole second week, we got dedicated to group projects. Um, we went back and forth about how much structure to give this. Um, we kind of arrived at the conclusion to give it just enough structure to let you, you all be part of the decision-making process. We were thinking offhand that the Friday, the last day of the Institute, we might have presentations in order to benefit from each other's feedback. Um, and Monday, again, we would do this kind of um, team building exercise where we try to identify mutual interests in different research questions. But in the inter intermediary days, um, we don't have any kind of strict uh, plan uh, 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 that, that we envision uh, uh, in order to succeed. Uh, for people following along on the live stream, this link here takes you to a Google Sheet where you can put your contact information in order to short, sort yourselves into groups as well as, as well if you so choose. Um, let me also just say um, that the, you know my uh, our grand vision for this would be not only that you know top publications come out of this um, institute and these group projects, but also that you might uh, be eligible for funding from the Russell Sage Foundation which last year put out its first call for funding in computational social science. And if you visit their website, they have a request for proposals. Um, essentially, they are interested in funding any work in the field that touches on the substantive issues of interest to the foundation, which are things like race, inequality, immigration, work, um, behavioral economics, um, some aspects of psychology. So um, I will, at some point over the next two weeks, send out that RFP. Um, but, um, it, you know, given that you're part of this institute, um, it's really a great opportunity to build to that deadline, which I think is in August. So one model for the group projects would be to write up a proposal that could then be submitted um, to, that, uh, to that request for proposals. Um, rules of engagement, there's a legendary uh, XKCD uh, um, thesis defense uh, comic. Um, Matt kind of already mentioned that we really encourage you to um, interrupt, get involved right away. Um, I am nearly certain that uh, it, at least some of what I do, someone in, it, it, at some point over the next two days, I'll be leading the next two days, but Matt's going to be leading the rest of today. Uh, someone will interrupt with a better way to do something that I'm, I'm trying to, to, to advocate for. If that's the case, I, I wholeheartedly encourage you to speak up. Um, we also have a Slack channel going. Um, we also have Piazza, uh, which for those of you who don't know, it's like a, it's basically like a, a crowdsourced question and answer question. It's also, by the way, great for teaching. So essentially, uh, someone can ask a question in, in an anonymous manner, um, and then either other participants in the class or the instructor or both can respond with a solution. Um, and um, that's another resource. Um, but I think, again, um, you know, uh, we want to be as open as possible. These, these first two classes, these first two lectures are maybe a little more didactic, and I hope we'll find our rhythm as we get into the afternoon and, and the next few days. Uh, but please do interrupt, and, um, and uh, please, again, be patient with the, the vast diversity that we've assembled here in terms of discipline, 
uh, career rank, skills in coding, and so on and so forth. The other thing very intentionally built into uh, this program is that we've packed you all into dorms um, with um, not only because uh, they're, they're cool uh, gothic buildings. Um, I was joking with some, some folks earlier, Duke here. Uh, Princeton here is, uh, is what Duke wants to be, and Princeton wants to be Oxford, and Oxford, Oxford wants to be Gothenburg. But, uh, but nevertheless, we hope that these dining halls will, will be a, a forum where you guys, you all can talk about um, your research projects. Um, we've also asked all the visiting speakers to join us for dinner. Um, and so that'll be another opportunity to meet with them. Uh, and of course, the breakfast as well and lunch, lunches as well. Um, finally, uh, this is really important. Um, I think we are all responsible for the success of this thing, given how open it is and given, again, how, uh, how our, our, our goals are very ambitious and given our diversity. This is a, an anonymous feedback form, which is just a Google Sheet. Um, there, where you can just put a comment at any time during the institute, um, and uh, we will try to look at it um, uh, uh, every night. Um, and we may, if, if themes come up, we may introduce them. I think at the beginning or end of a of a day to talk about how we could could improve something. Uh, but please, early and often, use this form. You don't have to use this form if you want to just you know say it to the group. That all the better. But um, just because I imagine some people will be more comfortable with that than others. Um, here's a good, good resource for, for giving feedback. Okay, so that's the spiel. That's, what, that's the, where the Institute came from, what we hope to do, how we hope to get there. And uh, finally, we'd just like to, to go around and do uh, introductions. Um, what, what I'd ask is just to give your name, your discipline or field, your career stage, and two to three in, uh, sentences about your research interests. So I'll go ahead and start. Um, I'm Chris Bale. I'm an associate professor of sociology and public policy at Duke. Um, I, um, a lot of my work is on text analysis, um, specifically bringing network analysis and text an automated text analysis together. Uh, I've also done a lot of work building apps for social science research. And substantively, I'm interested <coughs> in uh, counterterrorism, um, nonprofit organizations, and um, also a variety of public health issues. So. Let's see, should we go around this way? Sure. Or Matt? Let's do Matt next. There you go. Okay. There. Please. So, uh, my name's Ian Gray. I'm uh, in the sociology department at UCLA. I'm a second year in the PhD program there. Uh, my subset of interests are around um, global environmental change uh, as, a, as a social phenomenon um, that uh, requires institutional responses that can have different distributional effects um, in the U.S. and also internationally. Um, and I've, I've been trained as an ethnographer, and so um, I spent, before coming back to school at UCLA, I was in France um, at a kind of a social science research lab called the Media Lab that does a lot of work around textual analysis, um, network methods, and so I, I kind of got into using um, larger corpora of, of textual data um, to understand how different groups are situating themselves around um, some of these different uh, Problems related to climate change, largely. So, um, so I'm really excited to, to be here um, and learn more about textual analysis, but uh, and learn from you guys. So, great. Um, I'm Taylor Brown. I'm one of the TAs. Um, I'm a. I'm going to be a third year at Duke. I study uh, gender inequality in creative professions, at largely using. Um, computational methods, um, interested in how status hierarchies kind of perpetuate. Um, and I've, I've moved, for, I started at UNC with Chris and moved to Duke, and so I've, we've worked on a lot of projects using large corpora of texts. And I also work with Jim Moody at Duke, so I do a lot of uh, network stuff as well. My name is Yo-Yo, I'm the other TA. Uh, I'm a second year student in demography and social policy. My areas of interest are um, survey research methods and also educational inequality. Uh, <coughs> I'm Hiroka Shirado. Please call me just Hiro. Uh, my background was system engineering and robotics, but now I'm, uh, uh, sociology, uh, I'm in the sociological department at Yale University. I'm a, a third year PhD student, and i am just become a PhD candidate now. Uh, I'm doing uh, some uh, social network experiment, I'm, and I'm interested in the uh, collect 
human collective behavior, like uh, cooperation and coordination, and how technology change the human cooperation coordination. I'm Moritz Bucci. I'm a postdoc at the University of Zurich in Switzerland, and uh, focus on digital divide, digital inequality, internet use, and now trying to describe something we're calling overconsumption and how that how that is socially structured and what impact that may have. Hi all, I'm Karin Gilroy. I'm a graduate student, just finished my uh, second year in sociology at the University of Washington in Seattle. Um, I'm like, thematically I'm interested in sociology of sexuality, queer sociology, um, major themes being um, community invisibility, uh, specifically looking at demographic change and mechanisms of public opinion change. Um, methodologically focused sort of on statistics, geospatial analysis, agent-based modeling, things like that. Okay, here. Hi, I'm Rochelle Sherman. I'm a political scientist. Um, I'm a, currently a postdoctoral fellow at Stanford University um, at the Center for International Security Cooperation. Uh, I study international norms, um, so I have an interest in social norms and social identity. Um, I also have an interest in gender in the Muslim world. Uh, in terms of the of methods, I'm particularly interested in computational text analysis and teaching computational methods. Hi, I'm Anjali. I'm a second year PhD student at Stanford GSB in the Organizational Behavior Department. Um, and I am very interested in studying organizational culture, uh, particularly how organizational culture affects issues of diversity and equity and inclusion. Uh, and so far, most of what I've been doing is using agent based simulation methods to think about ecosystem effects on organizational culture within. Uh, but I'm really interested in looking at real and variable data and particularly sources of, of big data that can be used to find cultural um, features. Uh, my name is Maria Rodriguez. I'm uh, actually just finished my first year on the tenure track at the City University of New York, uh, Hunter College. I teach at the Silverman School of Social Work. I'm a social worker. Um, and my substantive area of interest is the impact of federal housing policy on low-income urban communities of color, particularly Latinos. Um, computationally, my interests are in using um, large uh, text data, principally Twitter, uh, to understand um, the experience of being a person of color um, in the United States and how that relates to the social determinants of color. Um. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to meet you all. Uh, I'm uh, Mike Yeomans. I'm a postdoc at Harvard at the Kennedy School. Uh, so I come from uh, like psychology, behavioral economics. And I'm really interested in thinking about how we can use uh, these kinds of tools to help people make better decisions, right? So, for example, whether it's, uh, you know, trying to pursue long-term goals in the future, uh, you know, trying to uh, make the best uh, lives for our, our future selves, uh, despite all the things that get in the way. I'm also thinking a lot about text analysis and conversations, how we pursue goals with one another. Um, and understanding uh, where we, what choices we make in those conversations and, and whether those are the right ones. Hi, I'm Molly. I am a postdoc at the University of Chicago and um, University of Wisconsin Madison. Um, my graduate training is in psychology, um, and I'm sort of now moving a little bit to sociology. Um, I'm sort of broadly interested in. Um, um, sort of meaning <laughs> um, and its relationship to language and how we can sort of use language to understand cross-linguistic variability um, and sort of how you organize the world. And, and I use um, experimental methods, um, primarily online, um, and some text analysis. Hi, I'm Lisa Argyle. I'm a postdoc actually here at Princeton, although I live and work in Washington, D.C., so I cannot help you find your way around campus. Mm -hmm. Um, I am a political scientist. I'm interested in especially political psychology and political behavior. Um, I look a lot at persuasion and communication, how people talk about politics, what kinds of things they say to each other, how, how they interact and form political opinions and identities. Uh, hi, I'm Charlotte. Uh, I'm working on my dissertation at the moment in sociology, so I guess I count as a late stage PhD finally. Um, I was a literature major as an undergrad, so this has been a really fun way to return to text analysis, but kind of bigger and better. Um, and this semester, I finished the last class for a secondary certificate in computational science and engineering. So 
that was uh, kind of times unpleasant foray into <laughs> uh, really science driven applications of this stuff. So I'm really happy to be back in social science applications of all of these cool computational methods. My name is Antje Kirche. I'm a research summer methodologist at RTI International and adjunct faculty in the sociology department at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. That was a mouthful. Um, so I did a postdoc in Lincoln and did my PhD in Germany, focusing again on how we can apply survey research methods to inquire about undeclared work among people uh, receiving a welfare benefit receipt in Germany. And now my research has shifted somewhat into how we can use machine learning techniques to adjust for a non-response bias uh, and how we can use um, big data uh, to come up with uh, better designs, responsive designs in terms of targeting people and getting people to participate in surveys. And just kind of at this intersection of big data and surveys. Hi, my name is Anna Filipova. I'm from uh, Carnegie Mellon University and I'm a postdoc there. Um, I have a background in communications, uh, but right now I'm in the School of Computer Science, uh, working at the Institute for Software Research. And broadly, I'm interested in the sustainability of open source software communities and supporting that in various ways. And the kind of methods that we tend to use to address that are um, a mixture of qualitative work, interviews, ethnographies, um, surveys, and increasingly looking at trace data from things like GitHub, from uh, Wikipedia, and other kinds of sources. Hi, I'm Riddhi. Uh, I'm a postdoc at Oxford from the UK and I uh, am a demographer mostly in terms of both my research substantively as well as methodologically. I'm interested in, in things to do with uh, births, deaths and sometimes migrations. Um, most of my work, uh, my thesis was on sort of looking at gender inequalities and how they interact with population processes, especially looking at gender preferences and their demographic manifestations. Um, and I'm uh, substantively interested in these topics, but thematic, uh, methodologically I'm quite interested in thinking about sort of um, big data, both in terms of sort of agent-based simulation, uh, sorry, big data in terms of, of digital trace data and how they can reveal sometimes uh, taboo behaviors. So I've tried to use Google to try and see if we can try and use digital trace to predict the propensity to practice sex-selective abortion. Um, and I'm also interested in agent-based modeling and, and computational methods um, with, uh, with respect to simulation tools. Um, yeah. Um, my name's Allie, and I'm uh, <coughs> going into my second year at the computer science PhD program at CU Boulder. Um, I took, my undergrad is in physics, and then I took a few years off to work in industry as a data scientist. Um, and I'm interested in gender inequality in academia. Um, and particularly, I want to learn more about um, techniques for data mining and uh, network analysis and um, survey information. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Bo Cowgill. Um, I'm an assistant professor at Columbia Business School. Uh, my disciplinary background uh, is in economics. And also, work that I do is in, uh, it's in labor and uh, organizational economics, and I'm interested in. Uh, field experiments and, and causal inference methods. Um, I have uh, you know, several projects about hiring and particularly homophily and, and hiring decisions uh, and also uh, a few projects on the effects of, of digitization machine learning on, uh, on the economy and particularly uh, the job market. And then lastly, I have a, a few papers about um, you know, the general field of, of, uh, of market design and, and uh, multi-sided platforms. Um, I'm Ethan Porter. I'm an assistant professor at GW. Uh, I'm a political scientist by training. Uh, substantively, I'm interested in uh, applications of behavioral economics and consumer psychology to political behavior and political persuasion. Um, I also have you know, broad interest in uh, field experiments, particularly as they relate to political persuasion uh, and political behavior and political attitudes. Um, and I have several papers in those areas. I'm Joshua. I'm doing my dissertation at the Edinburgh School for Communication at UPenn. Um, I am interested in studying collective decisions. A lot of my work right now focuses on the wisdom of crowds, so how can we be more accurate when we're estimating how many jelly beans are in a jar or what's the stock price of Google next week, but I'm generally interested in anything in terms of understanding how groups make decisions, you know, big and small groups. Um, mostly I use 
agent-based models and experimental methods, the best is when you have both in one paper. So, yeah. Hello, my name is Martin Elmarka. I'm coming from Aalto University and University of Helsinki. And my disciplinary background is actually mixed. I've done political science, including master's degree, and then I'm now finishing my PhD in computer science, in human-computer interaction and social computing kind of stuff. And my long term interest is to support people discussing about civic issues, especially this kind of polarizing civic issues that we all are encountering. And I'm hoping to actually make the jump to even be constructive in my research, so building new tools to support that kind of interaction and of course analyzing existing tools using any methods that we can find, including computational, classical text classification, surveys, stuff like that. Hi everyone, my name is Kat Albrecht and I just finished my first year in the sociology program at Northwestern. Though it's more accurate to say I split my time between sociology and uh, Luis Amaral's complex systems lab in the School of Engineering. And I'm mostly interested in how different types of assumptions can work into our data structurally when we build it and then again when we report it. And how these assumptions can uh, target and lead to certain trajectories in our theoretical contributions and our substantive conclusions. Um, and mostly, practically, what I, the data I'd like to work with is crime data because most of my like, practical industry experience has been in uh, child porn, homicide, and uh, food terrorism. Um, I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm a third year um, PhD in political science at Columbia. Um, but before that, I did a master's in computer science. So, like, a mix there. And I guess my research. Uh, basically, like, if you know word embeddings, I want to use word embeddings to study how, like, computational political theory, so how, you know, ideas like freedom and liberty have changed over the past 500 years or so. Um, and also network analysis to study things like, uh, like labor organizing. I'm Keevan. I'm a recent graduate of the University of Washington in sociology. Um, I guess my research is using kind of computational approaches to understand health, so uh, looking at homelessness, um, physical activity. Uh, I'm also interested in, I guess, kind of broadening this community and applying uh, to infrastructure problems, so whether that's working with uh, private government, or, or rather private citizens or public government, and uh, the like. Hi, everyone, and it's a joy to be here. My name is Biseho. I come from the University of Montreal, where I graduate. Now I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. And uh, as I said, it's a very joyful to be here. My research actually tried to understand the fertility dynamic in Southern Africa, how, how the discussion from migrant, African migrants in Western countries can help understand the family, family origin and fertility transition in, in Southern Africa. And we know that in South Africa, the fertility level is still very high. And if this workshop, this train can help me understand that very well, that would be amazing. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Abdullah, the one who sent an email <laughs> to everyone yesterday. <laughs> in the uh, I'm a first year PhD student at MIT in computational science and engineering. All my, my background is in computer science and applied math. And uh, for the past two years as well, for my master's I worked, and now for my PhD, I'm working with the Human Dynamics Group at MIT, with, uh, at the MIT Media Lab. And my main interest is to uh, applying ideas and approaches from the computational social science to, the, to understand theories about the labor market, in particular using mobile phone metadata and unemployment benef benefit program data in order to understand job seeking behaviors and uh, uh, how, uh, designing interventions to help people to become better job seekers. And at the same time, I'm interested in um, graph theory and the interaction of uh, uh, theoretical understanding of uh, group dynamics and uh, wisdom of the crowd and collective intelligence in general. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adanir. I'm uh, originally from Pakistan, but I've spent the last half of my life in the US. I just finished my PhD at NYU in sociology, and I'm about to start a postdoc at Brown. My dissertation was on democratization and sort of the conditions under which countries democratize or fall back into dictatorship. Um, but my, I have a second project for which I think the computational methods are probably more relevant on incarceration in policing in the United States and specifically public opinion on uh, around both police and protests. Uh, 
uh, in, in the United States today. And, and so my particular interest in the Institute, my, the reason the Institute piqued my interest was because I was banging my head against the wall trying to answer the questions I wanted to answer using conventional survey data. And I thought there were many examples of people using computational methods to, uh, to access better estimates of public opinion. So that was my interest. But I have, obviously, I'm very excited to learn a lot more than just that in this week, and I'm very excited to be here. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tong Wang. I finished my PhD last year in the CS department in MIT, and now I'm an assistant professor at the University of Iowa the Business School. Um, uh, my main research interest is in interpretable machine learning. Interpretable, interpretable means that it's the opposite uh, concept as to, say, like a deep neural net. The hottest topic, but we're doing the, the opposite thing. We want to make the models transparent and understandable to domain experts so that they can trust the model and adopt it. So, in terms of application, I, I'm actually pretty open to anything that's cool. That's the uh, definition of computational <laughs> social science. So, for example, I used to work with the Cambridge Police Department to develop a method to identify crime series from a database. And now I'm working with a bunch of dentists to detect uh, the patterns from the uh, dental anomalies for children with cleft lips. So basically, I'm open to any cool stuff where data, data mining and machine learning, especially like interpretive machine learning, can play a role in helping people make data-driven decisions. Uh, Elliot Ash, I have a JD and a PhD in economics from Columbia, and I'm just finishing up a postdoc post here at uh, the Woodrow Wilson School. My research is in law and economics, uh, political economy, in particular developing large corpora of judicial opinions and statutes and contracts and using uh, machine learning to analyze them. And hi, everyone. I'm Matt Salganik. Um, I'm a professor of sociology here at Princeton. Um, in the past, I've done some work with online experiments and online surveys, and you'll hear more about that in a couple days. My two most things I'm working on now are one is the book that you all have read the open review edition for, and the second thing is a mass collaboration we're doing called the Fragile Families Challenge, uh, where we're trying to see what can happen if hundreds of social scientists and data scientists collaborate on a project to improve the lives of disadvantaged kids in the US and you will all be participating in that on Friday. Uh, so I'm looking forward to all of that. And uh, in terms of what comes next on the schedule, I'm going to be talking some about ethics, but I think we can take a quick break. The coffee is here. Everyone can grab some coffee. The bathroom's also right out here. And we'll meet back here in five minutes and get started.